All eyes are now set on the next catalyst, which is CPI. Welcome on in here to the Stock Trends channel, and we're going to be diving on in. This should be a quick video here to set, just set the stage for this week, and then uh, we'll have a video towards the end of the week that will be kind of recapping and also setting the stage for what's next, depending upon how the market moves after CPI. So that said, the S&P didn't really do too much. Uh, technically, it was down on the day, but pretty much flat compared to where it closed off last week, up to the, still near the upper end of where it was, but uh, not too much action. And if you look at the five-minute chart, not super surprising. You know, move down and then up and then just chop the whole, a the whole afternoon really uh, away as we wait for CPI. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes you get trending days. Sometimes you don't. So it's kind of just luck of the draw and it happens when it happens and there's not really a uh because again you can say to yourself and i've always said this too uh, oh it's the day before cpi not gonna bother not gonna bother not gonna trade today not gonna look it's gonna chop around when you say that sometimes you have really good trend days sometimes you don't so it's every situation's different but what isn't different uh is the data and the data comes out 8 30 a.m eastern tomorrow morning the 14th of november and the last number we got on CPI was a 3.7% year over year. They're expecting a 3.3% number to come in on CPI. And core CPI is expecting to be 4.1, which would be the same as last month. We also have PPI, producer price index on Wednesday, same exact time pretty much in the morning Wednesday. We'll see what happens on CPI. Uh, PPI definitely has, plays a role, but is generally not as strong in terms of a market mover. So we'll see if that pans out that way this year or this month, I should say. Uh, and as we speak, SPY currently sits at 440. The S&P 500 ETF, 440. If you look at QQQ, on the other hand, uh, kind of a similar look inside bar almost, really just the charts look pretty strong to the upside. The problem is that you've got data tomorrow. And so there's really no way to, you know, guarantee that that's going to continue. And uh, we could see downside and then the market could reverse in a week and then head right back on up. So all that aside, all we can talk about is what we're seeing right now. The 10-year, as we speak, sits, it was up a bit more, up almost 4.7%. It's now sitting here at 4.638, 4.64, kind of on this... I don't want to say it's an inflection point, but this is a spot that we had struggled to, well, we had been rejecting off of on the way down, uh, tried to get back above it. And now we'll see what happens on the CPI if that ends up pushing it higher or lower, which uh, certainly uh, we, we tend to see some big moves here uh, on CPI. The VIX and the dollar we'll talk about next. Dollar maybe is trying to start to roll over after this breakdown here uh, underneath or after this back test of the down, the big red candle popping back up and maybe starting to head lower. We'll see if that ends up continuing uh, into the rest of the week. But so far, not a ton of movement uh, on the dollar either. Uh, the VIX kind of sitting here at just under 15 bucks. Depending on what happens on CPI, you can get some big moves in the VIX, uh, up or down. Obviously, we've seen the move up. We've also seen the moves down where CPI comes out, nothing happens. Market doesn't have to go up. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down a bit, maybe it stays flat and the VIX rolls over because now one more thing or at least a piece of the market that was uh, an uncertainty is now certain and it's behind us. And so we can see that happen the VIX if you don't get a big move down. If the market moves down a big way, expect the VIX to make a nice pop up into the upper teens potentially uh, by the end of the week if we do see a push or a continuation to the downside. Looking a little bit deeper, true inflation numbers here. This, I believe, was updated recently, so the charts are a little bit different than what they were, I feel like, a while back um, when we last looked at them. But we did get down to nearly 2%, uh, the true inflation current, you know, inflation rate. Currently, the CPI is reported to be 3.7. They are currently giving us a 2.92 right now, based on their current calculations of all the CPI categories uh, and how they are being impacted and felt right now. Uh, we tend to see the government reported rate be a little bit of a lagger behind or not show the true reality. And in this case, what true inflation is demonstrating is that inflation is actually lower right now, right now, than what the reports may show right now. Now, they, this true inflation rate also showed that inflation was higher than what the reports showed at the peak. So again, it's just kind of showing you what we are seeing right now. Now, to finish off the day, we had... 
a decent day, I guess, if you will, uh, across advancers, decliners, kind of split. So you had pretty much half the stocks advancing, half stocks declining, more stocks hitting new lows. I think a lot of stocks are more skewed towards new lows if you look at small caps and stuff. Um, then continue highs. 43.5% of stocks are above the 50 moving average. 33.3 are above their 200 period moving average. Uh, that is where the market sits leading into CPI. I do want to touch on Bitcoin and one chart request here really quick. We are looking at Bitcoin, which was down about 1.5% on the day. Bitcoin hit our target of 37.5 roughly, which we have a line literally drawn at that level. Uh, that was our first, or that was one of our targets to the upside, not our first, so just a target to the upside. Uh, and it would, it would not surprise me to see a consolidation or a pullback here at this point. Bitcoin has made a nice push, wouldn't surprise. So there's that. Hut 8 was a request. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Hut 8. Hot eight mining, H U T. Here's the weekly here. Tried to push up, seemed to have fallen off the past couple of days here. Yeah, uh, they have earnings on Tuesday, so tomorrow. That's the problem. Um, don't like the look of this chart going into earnings, but again, earnings anything could happen. Big upper wick on what looked to be a breakout level. And then it started to sell right back off. So not the best of looks going into earnings, but again, earnings tomorrow, anything can happen. Uh, that said, this is a spot that potentially could see some support, right? As the, uh, well, we saw some price action reject here and we saw some consolidation here. So it was a bounce zone just a few weeks ago. We've got better support, obviously, if we come down a bit further into this one, two dollar, well, really 185 to 180 range. Below that does not look great. So hopefully HUT stays there if you're bullish. Hopefully HUT does not break down underneath the volume we have right here because that would not be a great look. It potentially signals a further move to the downside. If not, if it can hold up and push higher, there's room. There's not a ton of volume resistance all the way up through until like 375. Of course, that will depend upon Bitcoin as well and how that does going forward. Uh, when it comes to crude oil, we look at this as well. I am just looking at if you type in U.S. oil on TradingView, it's CFDs on WTI crude oil. It pretty much tracks crude oil's price. Um, that's what I'm looking at. There's a bunch. You can look at futures. You can look at this. You can look, it doesn't really matter. Just pick one and, and follow that. And you know the, the exact price is going to be fairly close if you're looking at crude and whatever. Um, and then you just follow that chart. If you start jumping between you know futures contracts here, there, and then this, and then that, like you can see different prices and they can kind of throw you off. Just follow one of them uh, when you're following them. Crude oil. Decent move down the past couple of weeks. It's now, or the past like week and a half, bounce. it's bouncing back, retracing some of that. Again, like we said, I just don't really care about, I don't know. I mean, like big volume here, not a, maybe there's a breakdown to play here, maybe, but I, I just think the oil, you're in the chop zone for the past year. Anything could happen here and I'm letting it do its thing. So we'll watch it, plays a role in a CPI and it's a good sign, I guess, for CPI that this has been coming down the past couple of weeks. But ultimately, uh, in terms of direction, you are like right smack in the middle of the range of the past year. So I, I not the best spot to be uh, to be trading it, in my opinion, unless you're looking at much shorter term time frames and you're looking at different levels. So there you guys have it. I do want to mention too, really quick, not yet, but very, very soon, all the links and resources down below this video, there will be massive sales. So for example, TradingView, the platform we use right now to do all of our charting, Lux Algo, where you can add some of the best indicators in the game. There are going to be massive sales for that. Also, other resources that we have, TradeZella, etc. There will be massive Black Friday sales. Stay tuned. I will talk about them as they come out, but that is something to be paying attention to. So if you're looking to upgrade, you know, this or that, or you're looking to get into something like that or test something out, the time to do it is going to be like soon, in the next week or so, because that is when you're going to get the best price. That is when I tend to upgrade anything that I'm looking to do around this time of year. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching. We'll leave any links, resources down below. But again, like I said, save those links for next week when there are probably going to be better deals. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to leave any chart requests and good luck the rest of the week. Peace.